I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Patricia Burgess, who is one of two Teachers of the Year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Well, tell us about yourself. Tell us about where you teach and, and what you teach. I teach third grade at John Earhart okay. Elementary in the Elk Grove School District. Okay. So tell us about your class. Well, um, it was an interesting class, you know. Um, I had a lot of students who had a lot of needs um, behaviorally. Um, a lot of students were being, you know, uh, really needed support from their grandparents, um, more so last year. Um, but I, I had students who, um, you know, really wanted to learn and um, was accepting of, of students. Um, I think as a class we bonded and uh, grew to respect each other and uh, at the end of the year it was it was very rewarding to look back at the beginning of the school year and how much we had grown academically and socially. And third grade is kind of an interesting level because it's that um, read to learn step. Yes. You know, it's not, and they learn to, I mean the third grade reading level is very important but once they get that they are really you know uh, reading to learn that that's absolutely true and um, it it is a pivotal um, year for the students and uh, I feel like when preparing them you know for intermediate grades and uh, teaching them skills of how to unlock the meaning in ex with expository text I, I think that's really important and it's crucial um, you know, as, as a third grade teacher. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been a teacher? I've been teaching for 30 years. Oh gosh, now always at that level or different grade levels or? I've taught third, fourth, and fifth grades. Okay, okay, so in all that time uh, of teaching, what, what has, have you seen as the biggest changes in the classroom? Oh, wow, I've seen a lot of changes. I guess the, you know, when I first began teaching, uh, there were no computers in the classroom. You know, there weren't any t uh, technological labs or techno uh, technology teachers. Everything was done by hand, you know, as far as report cards and averaging grades. Um, so I say technology is a really big piece, you know, that's changed. Um, when I first started teaching, you know, with reading, we were teaching with reading in reading groups, uh, cooperative learning, learning centers, and then it switched over to um, whole language mm -hmm. and then you know it, the pendulum always swings back and then we were teaching um, phonics explicitly and standards based you know curriculum so I, I've seen a lot of changes in instruction and with technology. And now you're dealing with uh, the common core state standards yes. which is you know forcing all teachers to, to adjust a little more even. I agree but I'm actually looking forward to the implementation you know, um, I, I feel that um, children learn when they're communicating, you know, when um, they're collaborating. I, and I've always felt that, um, you know, throughout my, my teaching career and try to incorporate that. But see, the difference now is, you know, I would say, oh, you know, turn to your partner and share, you know, pair share. But now it's, it's conscious and it's uh, purposeful, you know, to have that academic conversation. And um, it's a way to teach the students to speak academically, use the academic vocabulary, um, to really hone in on the critical thinking skills. You know, it's not just teaching, and that's what, you know, with No Child Left Behind, you know, in that era, it was teaching, you know, breadth getting all of this, you know, the standards, teach the standards before the test in the spring. And I'm looking forward to teaching with depth and, and teaching um, with students collaborating with projects. You know, I, I just, I'm, I'm excited for mm -hmm. the change. So it's kind of rejuvenating for, for you. Very much, that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel, and, and because, you know, teaching 30 years, I'm, I'm still passionate about teaching, but I think part of that is I'm always trying to uh, improve 
uh, take staff development. I don't want to grow stagnant, you know, and stale. I want to be fresh, you know, with uh, my teaching and my instruction. So I, I really am excited about so the change. What made you become a teacher? Is it something when you were a child that you always wanted to be, or did you just kind of gravitate to it somehow? You know, when I was in fourth grade, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I really did. And I, I feel that it's like a vocational calling. And I would, you know, play at school, you know, play home, you know, go home and play school, and I would babysit and they were my pupils. So I think all along I knew I was going to be a teacher. Did you have any one teacher uh, in your past who you looked at and said, okay, that's, that's what I want to be like? Actually, my piano teacher, her name was oh, really? Carol Hughes, and mm -hmm. she was a teacher in the Elk Grove School District, but she taught piano on the side. And so I remember after our lesson, you know, I, I would sit on the bench and she would tell me about the day. She would tell me stories about what was happening and students in her class. and. Um, it, it fueled my dream to become a teacher. She was very caring and compassionate, and I wanted to be a teacher just like her. Mm. She really inspired me. So what inspires you every day? What motivates you to kind of go in the classroom and, and, and go every day and, and, and keep going? Well, to be honest, it's the students. The students motivate me. I, I love teaching. I love working with students. Um, I enjoy uh, building a relationship with them, making connections with them. Um, I enjoy uh, planning lesson plans, you know, to meet their needs. It, it's just very rewarding. But I would have to say it's, it's, it's the, the students. And, and what do you do to motivate some of those students, who, especially the, the harder ones, the more challenging students? Yes. What kind of tricks do you have? So interesting uh, that you would ask. Because last year, you know, there were some challenges along mm -hmm. the way. And I always feel like that makes me stronger. And, and just, just to, you know, keep things straight, I always feel that my class is the class I'm supposed to have. You know, I really do. And um, so there was this young person, and he was really into yo-yos. And his father had taken him to a convention down, you know, in Sacramento. And he came back and he could do all of these tricks. Mm. And so I said, would you be willing to teach, you know, some of our students some of the tricks of the yo-yo? He said, yes. So we went online, purchased six yo-yos. And, you know, it, it was a way to connect with him and to say, you know what, you're, you're valuable. You know what I mean? You're, and and it, it helped also with the way the, the students looked at him, you know, in a different light, mm -hmm. that, that he had success. But just looking at, as far as motiva motivation, you know, their interests, you know, if they play ball, how was that game? You know, how, how, how's your brother? You know, how, you know, how's your grandma? You know, just looking at their interests and, and uh, encouraging along the way, writing notes and, and verbally, you know, acknowledging them and thanking them and letting them know every morning. I'm so glad you're here today. And that works. It definitely works. It does. Yeah. It, it, it does because, see, motivation to me is the key to learning. And if I'm excited and passionate about teaching, you know, then that, I think, um, I, I think the students pick up on that. And I try to um, conduct the classroom that we are a team and that we care for one another and that we lift up one another and encourage and respect the differences. It, it's, it's the way that at the beginning of the year how you, you know, build that classroom um, attitude and, and atmosphere. What's it mean to you to be a teacher of the year? Well, it's very humbling, to be honest, really. Um, it's a learning experience. It's, it's stretching me. It's helping me to grow. I feel honored to represent the, the wonderful teachers in Elk Grove. You know, they do have um, a heart for students. They have a passion for teaching. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm really honored to represent them. Well, we're honored to have you with us today. We've been Thank speaking you. with Patricia Burgess, who is one of two teachers of the year for the Elk Grove Unified School District. Congratulations. Thank you so much.